Good morning. Good morning, DC fam. Good morning to all my DMV sports fanatics like I am. I have another um, take here. This one is going to be the Wizards lost last night to the um, Atlanta Hawks. I got to be honest, guys. I'm not even going to lie. I turned that game off because I had work early this morning. I turned that game off um, basically going into the fourth quarter when we was down by like 17 after the third. I was basically sleeping, dozing off, in and out throughout the second half. I was trying to watch. I thought I thought we would come back, make a rally, and get back in the game. But after that ended up door quarter, I didn't see us coming back, especially with that bill. But to my surprise, around like four in the morning when I was getting ready to leave for work, I actually saw the final score and I was stunned to see the Wizards actually made a great run and quite frankly should have won. When I when I watched the highlight and Listen to the interview post game. The Wizards should have won that game. This is another loss that Scott Brooks cost us, because apparently we had a lead. Um, we were down late by like one or so, and with the ball, and some of he called time out to this to call a play for us to go run a play on offense. This dude just let the was Westbrook and the guys bring the ball down, and I guess we missed the shot and lost the game. This is the type of stuff, man. Where um, this nigga Scott Bruce has cost us throughout his time his tenure in DC. This guy lost you close games. Scott Brooks lost you close games. He rarely wins them. And when we do win close games, it's not because of Scott Brooks. It's because the players basically made the plays to win the game, despite Scott Brooks. So that's my biggest issue with this dude. Even when we're winning, I say he's a problem. The quicker we fire him, the higher levels the Wizards will touch. Let's be sure with Westbrook and by the build together. They, they're going to touch major success. But we need coaches around us that knows momentum, that knows when to call and where to call timeout, that knows when to sub the right players in, and that knows when um, the last few minutes in the game, when to call plays that leave that give guys open shots because the Wizards rarely get open looks the last three minutes of a ball game. Most of the time when we score the last three minutes, it's because we have guys like Bill and Westbrook who can just make supreme plays, supreme athletic plays. They are just such good basketball players, especially on offense, that they're going to score themselves or they're going to make a play for somebody else to get a bucket. That's when we usually be successful late in the games. And that's the difference between April 6th, uh, before April 6th and until, uh, after April 6th, Wizards, is the fact that these guys are making plays the last few minutes of a ball game that we won't make it early in the year. We were close many games early in the season, but we lost them. Our last five losses, basically, has been all by one point or overtime. So the Wizards are playing great ball. And quite frankly, we should, we should be 17 and 0. We are 14 and 4, I think. 14 and 4 since April 6th. We really, really, really should be 18 and 0. Those four losses have all come by one point in regulation or three point, um, one or three points in overtime. So the Wizards are playing amazing basketball. But back to this um, Wizards game last night with the um, Atlanta Hawks. The Hawks are a great team. I, I said it before the game that. The biggest strength for Atlanta is the fact that they got Clint Capella in the middle to rebound. The guy is a quick leaper, um, leading the NBA in, in defensive rebounding this year and rebounding overall. Um, and one of the other second biggest strength, uh, probably their main strength, is shooting. They have a bunch of shooters, a bunch of shooters. All right, Carter, um, Young, um, young um, the dude they got from Sacramento, like, Atlanta's going to be a tough out, people. They're going to be a tough out. The only thing, uh, um, just just as I, um, how they let the Wizards in the game, watching the highlight, Atlanta's biggest issue is their defense. They have a lot of guys that teams can feast on offense because they can't really be. They're not defenders. Even the dude they got from um, Sacramento, he's not a good defender. And in the wing, if, you, if, you, if, you, if your worst defensive players are on the wings, you ain't going to win in the NBA. The only reason why Atlanta's winning, they do have some length out there. All right, they, they have drafted good, talented players out there. The dude from VA, they drafted a few years back in the top five. The dude is good. Herder is good. Um, the Sacramento dude. So they have shooters and length. And one thing about the NBA, if you can score, you're going to win. Especially nowadays where most teams don't pound any the paint anymore and take advantage of mismatches. If you can score in this league now, you're going to get W's in this league. And that's where Atlanta is. Atlanta's basically clinched the fourth seed. Now, they still got to win, like, two more games. But I think they're going to clinch it over the Miami Heat, uh, which won't give them home field in the playoffs. 
But that's a team that if we play them second round, I would love that matchup. The Wizards have Atlanta number. We've always had Atlanta number. If we catch them in the playoffs this year, we're taking them out. We'll prove it um, all throughout the season, and that will prove it, especially yesterday without Bradley Bill down 17 going to the fourth quarter and basically losing by one point, 125, 124. The Wizards were in that game and quite frankly had a chance to win it. That tells me a lot more about Atlanta than it does about the Wizards. Atlanta has no business making, making the Wizards stay in that game. That to me tells you that's a team that's not ready. Laying this, uh, when the season is this late, teams are supposed to be ready, preparing the mentality for playoff ball. And you up 17 going to the talk fourth quarter, and you let a team, and you, you let a team hang in there to a point where they almost win. Dude, you guys are not ready. The Wizards are ready. Against the top four seed in the East, a team that's playing great basketball with good shooters all around the court, with the NBA leading rebounder, you're down 17 going to the fourth quarter with that Bradley Bill and you only lost by one. West Westbrook set the record, 182 um, for triple doubles, passing Oscar Robinson. I knew that was going to happen. I don't see any, I don't see, I don't see anything that's going to keep Westbrook from having a triple double the rest of the way, even playoffs. No, nobody going to keep him because the way our style of play is exactly how Russell Westbrook like it. Space and shoot. We have a bunch of sh shooters and spaces. If Westbrook just make the right pass, we're going to be successful, even without Bill. Now, that led me back to the, uh, the rematch, which is tomorrow night on Wednesday night. We got to play Atlanta again, and in, in, back in Atlanta again. So, by the Bills going to miss this one too. But I think the confidence we gained from that fourth quarter, hopefully we'll come out and have a better start, especially that third quarter is what killed us. It was a tight, we were up by one going to halftime. And then that third quarter, we just didn't come out with the same focus. Atlanta blitzed us with like a 20 to two run. Before you know it, a, a tie game became a 17 point lead for them. So. There's a lot of lessons to learn here. The Wizards, I feel like, gain confident by that fourth quarter. So that's very important. And in this time of the year, you want to be gaining confident. Even if just a little bit each game, you want to be gaining confident. And then peak at the right time when it's the playing and playoffs. Which the Wizards, to me, are heading right in that direction. It's a good sign. Another thing I want to talk about is Bradley Bill basically responding to Ken, Ken Bazemore. Little punk-ass dude. People forget. Ken Bazemore has history, not just with Bradley Bill, but with the Wizards. When he was in Atlanta, the Wizards were beating them the fuck out of them every year, even though they were the way higher seed. Atlanta always used to be the higher seed against the Wizards. The Wizards were punishing them every year, every year. Matter of fact, I think there was one time they were number two and we were seven and we knocked them out. And that was the year we had Paul Pierce. That Wizards team, that Wizards team would have made it to the Eastern Conference Finals if it wasn't for Kent Bazemore, who ended up broken John Wall hand on a breakaway layup. People forget that. And then the following year, he almost did the same thing when Wall was going for a breakaway layup off of a steal off of him, Kent Baseball. A steal that um, Kelly Ube plucked, him the, plucked the ball from him, and Wall got it and was speeding down the other end to make a layup. This dude came in, literally stand right underneath the basket. An attempt that's clearly, that was clearly an attempt to injure Wall, to injure John Wall on his landing. This is why I know sometimes I always think John Wall was a street gangster. He was a fake-ass gangster. He was no real gangster. Because somebody did that to me, and you'd be playing all that tough guy, Kusana, you would've, I would have slapped him. That was one time I felt Wall should have slapped this dude. Everybody in the court knew what he was doing. Yet, he stood there arguing like, oh, man, what the hell? What did I do? What did I do? John should have slapped that dude. And that's where this fucking uh, baseball dude now understand it. Bradley Bill... Won't go rah, rah, rah on the internet. Bradley Bill's a real gangster. Bradley Bill will fuck this dude up when they play it. When next time they play again, I guarantee you, it will be physical action. I guarantee you. You all don't understand. When Bradley Bill see this dude, it's going to be on site. And I wish, and, and I hope the Warriors keep this nigga next year because it's going to make the Wizards and Warriors matchup a primetime matchup because I guarantee you Bradley Bill don't play. Bradley Bill almost smacked around fucking um, well, Draymond Green. They went at it. Choke Draymond Green. Bradley Bill don't play. Bradley Bill is one of those dudes. He, he play with he play with his emotions. He rarely show him, but he plays with emotions. And you you start coming at a St. Louis dude about his manhood, about pretending to be hurt. That's his, that question of man's manhood. You can tell a man he's pretending to be hurt, and he's not even your boy. Why would you even joke like that? That's another thing. This generation always want to joke. As if the, you, you and the person you're joking with are cool. Dude, you don't joke with people you don't know, especially about injuries, bro. And then to, and then to, and then after by the bill respond to hear this dickhead 
basically come back and say after after their game, come back and say, oh, it was a joke. I guess no one take a joke anymore. Dude, it was not no joke. You said it in a in an interview setting, no one laughs, and you sh right then you should have known what I said was off limit. And then you double down and laugh over it. I seem to say, no, see, none of y'all understand. None of y'all get the joke. Like, dude, that's the type of shit, man. I guarantee you, man. When Wizards play, um, this nigga team, any team this nigga belong on next year, it's going to be on site. And he knows it. He knows it. this is not John Wall. Bradley Bill will slap you if you disrespect him on the court. He will slap you. All right? Brad don't play that. He will slap you, bro. All right? Brad won't put his gang signs or all that shit. When you do bad wrong and he know you're trying to try him, he will fuck you up in front of everybody. And I guarantee you, Bradley Bill has it out for that nigga. He doesn't know it. And Brad, Brad, Brad will not let this shit go. I guarantee he will not let this go until you see this nigga again. You don't joke about another man's injuries, bro. And you talking about Brad was keeping up? Dude, Brad was leading the NBA in scoring for majority of this season. And the guy just started coasting the second half because why? Wow, Wizards were getting more dubs. So Brad realized, Brad realized, you know what? I don't have to go out there and drop 40 every night. We're winning. Westbrook is healthy again. We're winning. He's getting triple doubles again. We're winning. And West fucking uh, Steph Curry, bitch ass, had to go on a historic run. This dude was literally shooting 23 threes pointers a game to get back in it. And this one talk about, oh, he shoot, he take less shot than Bradley Bill. Of course he take less shots. The dude is shooting 23 threes a game, bro, in his run since the All-Star break for him to catch Bradley Bill in his corner race. Steph was literally shooting his arms off. Brad is not a scorer that shoot threes. You don't, it's, that's not how he get a bucket. He go in the hole. You telling me, I take 20 shots, right? And 15 of them are twos. I guarantee you, I'm going to have to make about 11 of those just to get 22 points. Or like a nigga like Steph Curry, who's shooting 23 threes a game. That's almost as many shots as Brad, Brad take the whole game. This nigga shoot that many threes a game. Nigga, even if you make nine of those, this dude still got 18 points. Or nine shots. Brad had to make 11 shots just to get 22 points. This dude had to make nine shots to get 18. To get 27. Nine shots just to get 27 points. That's the fucking difference, bro. People want to talk about he shoot less. Yeah, he shoot less. But we'll look at how many threes they shoot again. Steph is literally quadrupling Bradley Bill. Quadrupling him. And that's how he get his points. So don't look at the shot totals and how he's catching up. Nah, Bradley Bill has always been a volume shooter. But his averages are always been right up there. He always averaged about 40, 47 to 50% shooting. And three is about 30, 33 to about 37% shooting on three. That is not his strength. Steph Curry's strength is shooting threes. If he does what Brad does, Steph Curry will be out every year. He will be hurt in the middle of each season every year. He's not a physical dude. That's not his style. So Warriors fans don't know basketball. This is why sometimes I don't understand casuals, bro. Stat padding. Like, do y'all know what stat padding? I hear that word passed around West Westbrook. I hear only when the Wizards are playing, you hear that word. Steph Curry is the ultimate stat pattern. Dude, literally come out in the game and literally try to shoot many, 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 many threes. That's stat padding, bro. He's the definition of stat padding. He created a generation of stat patterns. And you don't want to talk about stat padding. And then his bitch ass team want to call Brad out on an injury, talking about he trying to keep up. Who is keeping up? Who led the NBA in scoring for two thirds of the season? And not just by like one point or two points, but like three, four points. And who started shooting threes on a historic pace, almost 25 threes a game, just to catch up with Bradley Bill? You guys are clowns, bro. Y'all know basketball for you start talking out of your ass. As for baseball, baseball is on sight. If you know who Bradley Bill is, it's on sight, my nigga. You better cup that plea and actually cup that plea, bro. You better get online the same way you want to joke around like a bitch-ass nigga. And then and when shit come hit the fan, you want to backtrack, talk about it was just a joke. Nigga, you better get out there and say the same shit on the interview, saying, like, yo, I went out of line, Brad. I was wrong. Or believe me, man, when Brad catch you, my nigga, you're going to see a real, real ass at Lewis, nigga, bro. This bitch ass nigga, bro. This nigga from ODU barely ever did anything in the fucking league. The only time he ever was relevant was with Atlanta, and the Wizards took their soul. Came in their building, fuck him in the ass. And now you're over here, a young Brad to build like that. Brad was young at that time. Brad couldn't even stay healthy in those years. 
a, a mega superstar now, Brad the Bill. This nigga won't talk shit about Brad the Bill. I swear, man. Bench warmers talking, acting like stars. I swear, man. This this what Drake was talking about, bro. The bitch niggas that ain't doing shit in this league. They haven't averaged in more than eight point in this league. It's over here calling out a perennial all star and a mega superstar in the league, Brad the Bill.